Hello, everybody. It's Storytime with Teacher Gabe, and today we're reading The Little Book of Valentine's Day by Zach Bush and Lori Friedman and illustrated by Sarah Van Avera. Valentine's Day is the perfect holiday to tell all the special people in your life just how much they mean to you. And there are so many fun, creative ways you can do it. Ready for some Valentine's Day's tips and tricks and secrets? Just turn the page. All right, let's do that. A good place to begin is by making a list. You can include anyone on yours who you want to celebrate on Valentine's Day. Your family, your friends, your teacher, even special people in your community. Who would you put on your list? Let's see, who does this person have on theirs? Let's see, they have mom, dad, brother, aunt, cousin, babysitter, grandma, sister, grandpa, uncle, friend, and teacher. There are so many things you can do to make this Valentine's Day unforgettable. Making cards is easy and lots of fun. All you need is some paper, markers, or crayons and any other art supplies you might want to use. And of course, a grown-up to help. Valentine's Day is all about love, which means lots and lots of hearts. Here's a trick for making your own. Step one, fold a piece of construction paper in half. Step two, draw a half a heart on one side of the paper, and then step three, cut along that line. And then step four, open it up, and ta-da, a perfect heart. You can write on your hearts, decorate your hearts, or glue your hearts together. Whatever you decide to do, everyone will love getting Valentine's Day cards made by you. There are so many other ways to make Valentine's Day extra special. You can bake cookies and share them with the people you love. Oh, that, they're baking cookies right there. You can pick flowers and give them to someone special. Oh, that's a lot of blue flowers. You can make bracelets and exchange them with a close friend. Oh, they have a lot of bracelets on. One of the most fun things to do on Valentine's Day is to play games with your friends and family like a heart bean bag toss, heart hopscotch, heart tic-tac-toe, or a Valentine's Day game of Cupid's arrow toss. Huh, I don't think I've ever played that one. You can also use your words on Valentine's Day. There are so many special ones to choose from. There's I love you with all my heart, that's a good way of telling someone that you are filled with love for them. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. If you say that to another person who wants to talk, it shows them how much you care. Even though you are far away, you are always in my heart. When the people you love aren't nearby, this is a great way to tell them just how much you miss and love them. Follow your heart. And some days you just need to remind yourself to listen to your heart about which direction you should go. Still not sure what you want to do to celebrate Valentine's Day? To celebrate Valentine's Day. You can share some Valentine's Day candy. You can make Valentine's Day treats. You can give out goodie bags filled with Valentine's Day surprises. You can make a Valentine's Day promise to be best friends forever. And remember, the best Valentine's Day gift of all is always a hug and a kiss. Congratulations, you've earned your Valentine's Day badge. Now you know so many great ways to make Valentine's Day extra special. All right. And that was the Valentine's Day book. Next, we have Get Red, an adventure in color by Tony Porto and 3CD. 
Oh, I'm gonna have to make these a little bigger. Let's see. Um, I think that's just to who the book's written to. I've got this huge problem, a whole bunch of them really. First of all, everyone is mad at me. Oh my, my teacher, Mr. Fox is red hot. Mom and dad are even hotter sometimes like this. Oh, like a volcano. And my goofy little brother, Rusty, likes to think he's dad. He just looks at me like this. See, I had a report that was due today in class. It was supposed to be about Mars, the red planet. I was going to do it too, except you can't draw a decent picture of Mars without a red crayon, and mine ran away. That's my second huge problem. How do I know my crayon has run away? Well, that, well, that's huge problem number three. You won't believe me, but the crayon talks to me. It's not like I'm Dr. Doolittle or anything. Even my cat, even my cat Beans stares off into space whenever I try to talk to her. Really, it's only the silly red crayon that's talked ever since I slipped him out of his new box on the first day of class. Hey kid, yeah, you. In the beginning of the school year, when he was tall and proud, he'd brag about all the important red things in the world. He talked of brave red trucks who battled powerful red flames without blinking a headlight. He boasted of red friends who made it big in sports, some who appeared in every World Series since the very first one. He crowed about red things on farms. As the weeks went on, that crayon told me about so much great red stuff that it started to affect my schoolwork in, in good ways at first. In social studies, when Mr. Fox asked, what does anyone know about Kenya, Africa? I, res I raised my hand in a flash. And in science, when we studied rainforests, I knew tons of answers. The red crayon and I did projects together too. During safety week, we worked crayon in hand to make this banner. Use your head, watch for red. It was right before holiday vacation that I noticed things maybe weren't so perfect. First, my classmate Ruby, who thinks I'm pretty cool or not a geek anyway, came right up behind me in line for recess. She told me how she's had just about enough of me and my Mr. Smarty Pants act in class. And as I turned around to face her, this is the pretty sight I saw. Oh, she's sticking her tongue out. Well, you'd think I'd be angry, but to tell the truth, all I could think about were raspberries. And raspberries are red, and her tongue is very red. And gee, I hope she isn't sick. At right about that time, I also began noticing my red crayon. Pal was really no pal at all. He was becoming less and less friendly as he grew stubbier. Once while I was making a poster for art class, he skipped out on me. He said I wasn't gonna rub him out completely until he was good and ready. Can you believe it? He left me right when I really needed him. It took an entire day to find him too, hiding under my Cincinnati Reds baseball cap. As far as art posters are concerned, I made the best of bad situations and colored a few artworks less than I'd wanted to. Instead of 200 of the, of the greatest red artworks in the entire world, he only put two. By the way, this cool sculpture would have been on my poster if it wasn't for him. It was supposed to be artwork number 172. Speaking of love, on Valentine's Day, the red stub ran off again. This time, I wasn't so lucky because you can hardly color. Let's see. This time, I wasn't so lucky because you can hardly color a valentine with anything but red. So I ran down to the corner store, bought these sappy cards. That's all that was left. Real. That's all that was left over, really. To make matters worse, 
Rose at the checkout counter thought I was such a cute snoogie woogie, snoogie snoogie woogie, that she just had to express herself. Yuck! It took three days to find him after that incident, and it would have taken longer too if my cat Beans hadn't fished the stub out from behind Mom's tomatoes on the kitchen windowsill. So, like I said, I have a huge problem. If I don't do my Mars report today, Mom and Dad and Mr. Fox are going to blow sky high. Not to mention the new faces Rusty will make at me. I've searched high and low for my crayon, for my crayon pal, and it's as if he's vanished off the face of the Earth. Poof! Oh, why couldn't Mars have been a green planet, or a blue planet, or even a purple planet? Hey, that's an idea. Listen up, stubby red crayon, wherever you are. I've decided to color Mars purple. That's right, purple. Purple is almost red, and it's just as good, too. In fact, in fact, Mr. Fox won't notice the difference. No one will. Are you kidding? Mars isn't purple, it's red. It's absolutely, positively red. It's all red and nothing else. Well, red stub, why don't you show me what you mean? And that was the last I saw of the red crayon. He was proud, too proud to pass up the Mars report. Though he got me into some trouble, I think I'll miss him. Let's see. Oh, I can't exactly read what the purple crayon is saying now. Hey, hey, kid. You were right, you know. Purple is just as good as red. In fact, it's better. Did you know purple is the color of, of royalty and... Uh-oh. Now his purple crayon is talking to him. All right. And that was Get Red. And next we have Bear Sees Color by Carmel Wilson and Jane Chapman. Let's see if we can find some of the color brown, which is the color of this week. I already see that Mr. Bear and Mr. Mouse are both brown. Let's see if we can find some more. I'm going to have to turn this one, though. Mouse and Bear are walking. They are chitter-chatter talking. So much for them to do, and the bear sees... Blue. Blue flowers by the trail. Blueberries, blue pale. Blue, blue everywhere. Can you spy blue with bear? Let's see. We see the blue water, the blue fish. Oh, that's a lot of blue in there. Along the trail hops hair. Howdy ho there, mouse and bear. Hair points up ahead, and the bear sees red. Red blossoms, red cherries, red juicy raspberries. Red, red everywhere. Can you spy red with bear? We just read a book all about red. Badger's at the pond with his old galoshes on. Look there, badger bellows, and the bear sees. <clears throat> yellow, drippy, sticky, oh so yummy, honeycombs with yellow honey, yellow, yellow everywhere. Can you find it just like bear? Let's see. I also see some yellow sunflowers. Gophers out with mole. They're out. They're on a little stroll. Bear spots them by the stream, and the bear sees green. Green mint for making tea, green and tasty sweet peas. Green, green everywhere. Can you spy green with bear? Raven, owl, and wren lay a picnic in the glen. The friends all gather round, and the friends see... Brown! There's the color of the week. Let's see what they have for the color of the week. Chocolate cake, brown and sweet. Brown cookie, such a treat. Brown eyes, brown hair, friendly, fluffy brown. Oh, wait, I think that's supposed to go into brown eyes, brown hair, friendly, fluffy, brown, bear. There we go. Yeah, that's all supposed to go together. Colors, colors everywhere. Can you find colors just like bear? Let's see. We have some of the red raspberries, some of the blue fish, yellow honeycombs, the brown cookies and the brown chocolate cake. Let's see. I Was that all the colors? I think so. Oh, no, I see green green apples back there. There we go. Green was another one. All right, and that was Bears Sea Color.
they are seas colored. And that was all the stories I have for today. Thank you guys for reading with me. I hope you guys have a good day.